Hello again, I am Blunty, and today I'm giving you an old Blunty review rundown of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Ray. And I have to admit, I'm going to be cheating a little bit because essentially the Sony, Ex er <laughs> Sony Ericsson Xperia Ray is pretty much the same as the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc, except in a smaller package. And seeing as though I've already done a pretty comprehensive review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc, when it comes to reviewing the Sony Ericsson, uh, why can't I say that word today? Sony Ericsson Xperia. I won't have to say it for much longer. Apparently, Sony are buying out the half of Sony Ericsson that Ericsson owns. So it'll just be Sony phones from now on in sometime in the future. Anyway, the, the Arc is basically the same as the Ray, and because I've already done the review of the Arc, you can just watch that and transfer most of what I said about that then to this now. You get me? But anyway, let's take a quick tour around the hardware of the Sony Ericsson Xperia ray and uh, have a bit of a chat about what the differences actually mean and what this slender slimmed down teeny weeny version of the xperia arc actually means for using and living with the phone day to day first off and i'm almost bored of saying this every time i review a sony gadget but the screen is beautiful i think it would be a bit more noteworthy the day I come across a Sony product with a crappy screen. It's almost tedious knowing that the screen is something they just don't even know how to get wrong anymore. Around the side, the standard micro USB interface. Around the back, the camera, which we'll look more into in a moment. And the speaker, which is surprisingly loud and clear. Volume button rocker around the side in the regular spot. Power button and headphone socket up the top where they belong. Absolutely no surprises so far. Anyway, inside where the comparative size of the SIM card gives you another hint as to just how delicate the dimensions of this little bugger are, you'll find the 4GB micro SD card, which seems pretty tiny by today's standards. And as usual, you can switch it out for something bigger if you need more onboard storage. But this is a phone that is built around Sony's newly rebranded music and video streaming services, so storing stuff locally isn't the priority here. Now, onto the camera. As I mentioned a few moments ago, most of the innards in the ray match the arcs, and this includes that superb camera that I loved so much the first time round. In fact, this camera is so good, this is the same sensor that Apple decided to cram into the new iPhone 4S, and people are raving about the quality over there, too. The camera application still has a few minor foibles, but nothing that's a showstopper. And I'd be perfectly happy on a shoot if this was the only camera I had to hand. It really is a superb performer. The user interface is, once again, identical to the ARCs, and in fact, all of Sony's Xperia phone models. And again, I utterly failed to get it to slow down, stutter, or chug, no matter what I asked of it. At every poke and swipe, it was smooth and responsive, and pretty pleasant to look at, too. Now for one of Sony's new party pieces on the Ray. This is the first of its family to feature Sony's newly rebranded movie streaming service, now called Video Unlimited, built right in. Underneath it works much the same way as any other movie streaming service that is around about today works. On the surface though, it's a nice and elegant interface and pulling things down to watch is a smooth and pain-free experience as you can hope for. And of course, it can fully integrate with your PS3 and Sony TVs just fine too, so if you live in a Sony home, you're gonna dig this. Then there's Music Unlimited, which you probably already guessed is the musical equivalent, and everything I just said applies here too, and it's proven to be quite a good way to explore and discover new music. Back to the main interface, it's worth pointing out the keyboard. Yes, it's the same keyboard as on the other models, but I had assumed the combination of the slim dimensions of the screen and my fat man thumbs would mean I'd be making a colossal clot of myself clumsily, catastrophically, making embarrassing typos. But frankly, it worked perfectly. I think the touchscreen error correction and word prediction software has been polished and tweaked to near perfection. Out of the box, the phone does default to a T9 style keyboard. So if you do find the QWERTY keyboard a bit cramped, you can use that. But frankly, I doubt you'll need it. Final word is this, it is every bit as good as the Fantastic Arc was, but it's made for people who prefer something a little bit more subtle in its size. Or, to put it another way, if I want to risk a politically correct police cop jumping all over me and making huge every reactions to a simple off-handed comment, the Ray is the Arc built for chicks. 
It's smaller, it's cuter, it's easy to cram into those impractically tiny handbags that come into fashion from time to time, and for all I know about fashion, could be in fashion right now. Is that sexist to say? I can't tell anymore. I don't care anymore. It's the arc for chicks. The ray is the arc for chicks. I'm said it. I'm saying it. I'm standing by it. It's a chick phone. Or a tiny man phone. If you happen to be a tiny man. Or want a tiny phone and a man. Thanks for watching. Leave your overreactions in the usual place. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.